Hi, I'm Milton. And I'm Bert. And welcome to Wild Africa Experience. Experience. Right, okay. Bert. Tell me about the interesting story you wanted to you wanted to share with me something. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I've got this this video right. was taken by um, um, these friends of mine from Austria, Harold and Martin. Okay. And we were we were in in a in a national park. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought it would be very interesting since we're talking about buffaloes today. Mm. Look at this terrain. Yeah. Quite nice terrain. Eh? Absolutely, I can see there's a lion hiding there. See. Wow! Did you check on that lion? Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite amazing that uh, the way they ambush, you see the one which was uh, an, an instigator, it mm -hmm. was just right here, mm -hmm. and then there was one which was ambushing there, all mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, all of them, they started pursuing towards the buffaloes, mm -hmm. and um, uh, they all had to join together. So that's, that's, that's an amazing um, hunting technique. Uh, so like we, like we talked about, um, we, we, we lions are hunting a kind of a cow wound formation, and the one which um, does the, 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 the instigator, she, she, it, it, it has to be right behind the buffaloes mm -hmm. and the other one in front. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing, hey? Yeah. Hunting technique. It's quite an interesting mm. one. One thing I found quite weird in this is, is how the whole thing went about. You know, um, with, with lions, it's isn't it um, the, the bigger the pride, the greater the chances that they will catch a bigger prey like a, a buffalo? I, I saw some, 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 some calves there. No, they would have been going for the cows, but did you see how the, the, the buffaloes were protecting the little ones? Absolutely, buffaloes, they're very protective mm. about their, their little ones. Mm. So what happened there, what could happen now mm -hmm. is, is, they, is they ran into that, that bush. Did you see how, how, how good was that terrain? Mm. The lions were nicely camouflaged there, mm -hmm. and the, the buffaloes, they thought of going straight into the bush. Mm -hmm. What will happen is they will run for a short period of time, and they'll turn back, and the, the, the cows will be right behind, and then they'll fight. I've seen the retaliation is something else. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard of, um, in a way back where there, there was a famous uh, Kruger National Park clip. Battle in the Kruger. Kruger. Yeah, yes, I remember yes. that. It's I remember th that. Such a thing can happen, and mm -hmm. I've seen so many times buffaloes um, coming back and retaliating, fighting back to, 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 to the lions. And mm -hmm. they can be very, very dangerous. That's Seeing cool. lions getting tossed up the up the air and um and uh, yeah it's it's, it's amazing it's hmm. yeah. quite interesting because uh as far as we are aware buffaloes are, are one of the most dangerous in terms of whether you're walking or hunting they can easily be the most formidable um of the big five absolutely yeah B buffaloes they they are they are bad news uh, when it whenever it comes to protecting themselves and the calves and the family herds it's just stunning. Mm -hmm. you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't believe that such an animal which looks like uh, you know, our normal cow can be, can be very wild like that, you know, mm -hmm. fighting back and um, thinking such a thing like that. Because we always say elephants, they don't forget, but buffaloes, they'll never forgive you. Whenever you enter their territory, mm -hmm. they would fight back. They, they are quite an amazing animal. That's quite an mm -hmm. interesting one, eh? Because right there on the clip, you see that it looks like they were all relaxing because buffaloes during the day, they love to relax under the shed and to regurgitate and chew in the cart because they put four stomach chambers, eh? They're ruminants. So yeah. They're ruminants. Mm -hmm. So they would, they would spend the whole evening just grazing normally mm -hmm. and um, early in the morning they'll visit water holes and they would look for a nice shared area where they would, where, where they would relax. Mm. But now in this, um, in this clip which you've just showed me, it looks like lions are also kind of in the same proximity, mm -hmm. seeking for the same shed because mm. they also need to, to, to be under the shed when it's very hot because it's the light, I've seen the light of that thing. It was, it was in the daylight. Eh? Mm -hmm. It, it was, was late, um, late morning, yeah, late just morning. before 12 yes. o'clock. So, so basically, probably they were coming from uh, morning drink and then they would just chill out there. And um, in, in, a, in, a, in a herd of buffaloes, you'll see that um, they will be all, you know, sitting in a brisket formation, mm -hmm. all looking in different directions. Mm -hmm. And so uh, their eyes will be checking around, ears, they'll be omnidirectional moving, mm -hmm. um, just trying to, to detect the sounds. Mm -hmm. Because if you look very carefully in the, in the ear of the buffalo, there are some also... Um, some vibrato hairs, they're there to, um, to, to screen the white noise mm -hmm. and then they'll get the fine sound mm. so that they can detect whatever is happening. Apart from that, they've got some amazing sense of smelling as well. So that's one thing when you're walking a buffalo, approaching it on foot, you need to consider your wind direction, make sure that you've got an ash bag, make sure that you've got um, a proper working rifle because 
um, if a buffalo charges you, if it decides to come charging fully, it will never stop. The only way to stop that is for you, either you quickly scan for a safe ground or you have to take it on the brain shot. But we, we, we guides, we prefer to shoot with cameras. Mm -hmm. we, 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 it's just rifles we need to take them with just for it's a precaution. Some, a precaution. Mm. In, in the event that if something crops out, we'll be able to protect our guests. Mm. Yeah. yeah, one thing I noticed about that footage as well that I found quite interesting is the fact that if you've noticed, it's not a very clear one. We, it, it was taken by a, a camera phone. It, it, it was in a Mopane woodland. All right. All right. And then there was some white, the white lime on the, on the ground. Mm. And the first thing that came into my mind is maybe they came to leak on the salt on the ground, the buffaloes as well. And then mm. the lions might have been there because they were coming from a water hole. So all these buffaloes eating the salt. It's, it's, a, it's a famous process that we call geophagy, whereby you find um, animals leaking the ground mm. or the earth just to get extra nutrients that they wouldn't get in, in the grass or in any type of food that they would uh, find in general. So, so it's something that I also found quite interesting. And, and then the lions came into the picture. So it, it, it ended up being quite an amazing day. A lovely, so lovely. Speak. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. You know, so it's some interesting stuff out there. Mm. You know, talking about the geophagy, you know, lions as well, they have a tendency of feeding on the grass just to wake up their stomach. Huh? Mm. You sometimes see them like they're browsing, mm. but it's, it, it helps them. Mm. Elephants do the same thing. They, they, they also do the geophagy, mm. which is, um, technically it means eth eating, mm. which is uh, quite an amazing phenomenon. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, the footage was amazing, it was good. And one thing I liked is well, look at uh, the colors. They were blending nicely with the grass. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and um, so they, would prob they were probably not very far. Mm. And I like that technique. Uh, they were advancing, crawling, you know, well, going to, to, towards the buffaloes. Yeah. And it's, it, it was a very amazing organized crew. It's quite interesting, yeah. eh? Um, and and uh, you, you could clearly tell that um, I think the there were, there were quite a mix there of, of females and, and, and one or two bulls. When it comes to territory in terms of buffaloes, what's your take on that? Uh, as far as I'm aware, they are not territorial, but they've got quite some huge home ranges and quite a few males would form what the famous coined word Daga boys, and especially in Zimbabwe, whereby those big boys, about four to five years old, would start moving around looking for mud wallows and then they roll in it and then all they do is hide testosterone levels are pretty high mm. and they are ready those are the most dangerous ones to bump into yeah yeah indeed what i've just said you know what happened is uh, with buffaloes um we th they're kind of a hierarchy or the kind of movement they are gregarious meaning they move in big family groups all right so you'd find that in front there there would be a breeding or quite bigger females mm -hmm. uh, with the youngsters following them and some of the males, some right in the back. All right. So it's, it's, it's quite amazing. There is what we call natural selection. Uh, when it comes to when lions are hunting, they would look for you know, uh, the weakest link among the group. How does that work? So in, in buffaloes, whenever they're walking, imagine they are grazers. They feed as they walk. The, the ones in front, they have a tendency of getting um, the fresh, nice grass. Okay, Very nutritious. Okay, and then those which are behind, slowly, slowly, they won't get the right, the right, the right stuff. Mm. So when we, when we ever, uh, any buffalo which is not that great and it's feeling like no, I'm no longer energetic enough to lead the group to be in front, it slowly comes backwards, slowly comes backwards, and it loses condition. And um, some older bulls, um, when when they face competition and fighting and everything, eventually. Um, those bulls, they eventually get ostracized and um, it's, it stays alone and it becomes a loner. So loners, they are very dangerous. You sometimes find that they've got a broken chip horn, you know, um, which they call the scrump. Huh? It's just mm -hmm. like um, the, the rugby, you know, the scrump, scrump mm -hmm. head. Mm -hmm. So those buffaloes, they have been there, they've done it, they've been there, they, they've got some amazing experience. So the Dagger boys, they are great. They're great. That's so you never want to bump into the Dagger boys because they, 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 they're up to no, 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 problems. Mm. They, they, they've been there. They don't have mercy on you. Mm. 
Yeah. Well, f just for me, to be honest, it's probably one of my worst animals to encounter when I'm mm. walking. But uh, when we come back, we'll show you a few footages of the biggest herds of buffaloes that we've seen around Africa in Wange. And I'm sure it's something that you'd like seeing. I've, last time I saw a herd of over 700 buffaloes. Wow, yeah, indeed, indeed. Because if, if you think of um, in, in Wange National Park, um, Manapus as well, um, they, they have a tendency of crossing between borders. And uh, there is a famous uh, buffalo herd as well that is um, situated in Botswana known as Sedudu Island. Mm. You know Sedudu oh, Island? Yeah. They, there is a big herd of buffalo that moves from Sedudu to Chobe. And um, sometimes some of them can even cross to the Quadri Point closer to um, Kazungula. Kazungula into Zimbabwe. So, so, so you know what? They, they can traverse. They don't have any problem. They don't have borders. They can swim across and you know, quite mm. easily and um, be able to, to get fresh food, wherever they, they, they want. Yeah. This last section, we're going to talk about um, signs to look at when a buffalo is about to attack. Uh, we're talking in the sense that you, you own a bushwalk as a guide. What signs are you going to look at when a buffalo is about to attack and then you can say let me pull back because from what i've noticed buffaloes don't show much of signs i don't know what you think about that milton that's right uh, a bit uh basically guys um whenever you're walking like i've mentioned uh, in, in our previous show that uh, um an ash bag mm. is very important to mm. have you'd need to consider wind direction so when you're doing a walking safari you'd need to walk in areas either it can be an undulating terrain where you can get in a little bit of an um, uh, elevated area. You can see from a distance, uh, look with the, check with the binoculars. Um, or if you are in a nice and open area, wind's blowing towards you nicely. But in the event that the wind has just turned and uh, the buffalo might have picked, you, picked up the wind. Mm -hmm. So they have a tendency of lifting up the head. You know, they would, they would want to show you that, okay, What's happening? And they want to confirm your presence. So in that event, if you have attained a good distance, it's, it's fine. You, you, you need to watch the, the, the buffalo in the event if it comes towards you. Mm -hmm. So if, it's too, if it starts to come walking slowly, you, no, you don't need to stop now. You now need to redirect your group to the safe ground. Keep backing off because in in split of a second, it might start to charge. Mm -hmm. So consider your wind direction mm -hmm. and consider your distances. I would say the safest um, um, distance for you to watch a buffalo on an um, open play, you know, would be good 35, 40 meters, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. But if you're in an area where the terrain is not that great, you then, you can even go up to 10, 15 meters mm -hmm. because the wind will be nicely, maybe on up the hill, mm -hmm. Uh, and or, or a little bit at the bottom, and seeing them on the, on the, on the other side. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I would say considering your terrain and your, your, your wind direction and the signs, look at the buffalo because it starts lifting up the head, tossing up the, the grass up and then moving back and forth. And then from there, the buffalo will start to come. And when it comes, it lifts up the head. And it's, come, it's coming to you. Mm. And most cases, it will be like, have that courage you know, mm. of coming, mm. eat across the bra uh, um, um, ribs, nicely tightened, and the animal will be coming mm. fast, running towards mm. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's, it's, it's highly important to recognize that a, a buffalo itself, a big bull would weigh up to about a, 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 a thousand kilograms of pure muscle, and from a charging speed of 56 kilometers an hour, there's not much chance in running away there, so you mm. need to watch out for that. Right. And then we, we on the um, places, we were talking about places where we can find some buffaloes. They're pretty ubiquitous around Zimbabwe. So you find that uh, they're pretty much mm. in a whole lot mm. of places. Mana pools. Absolutely. Uh, Wangi National Park uh, and um, Gona Region National Park mm. and a lot of uh, private game reserves. And I don't know, have you heard of um, what I call disease-free buffaloes? Disease-free um, yeah, buffaloes. Disease buffaloes. It's, a, it's a breed of buffalo which was first bred in Argentina where they don't have um, a bovine disease. So in most private game reserves, which are closer to um, the, the, the commercial farming, like uh, where they've got a uh, cattle range, they, they try by all means to make sure that you get disease-free buffaloes because mm. as they share the same kind of um, 
uh, uh, river channel, it, it will end up where they will have same diseases like TB, foot and mouth, and all those things. Mm -hmm. So disease-free buffaloes, they can be very exorbitant. You know, I've, I've heard of a buffalo one costing um, almost half a million rand, mm. just, just a disease-free buffalo. So yeah, they, they, they're quite um, exorbitant, but it's a, it's a very good breed, mm. and um, yeah. Yeah, that's quite interesting, eh? Makes me wonder well, how we didn't manage to, to breed buffaloes um, in, in, in our lifetime, you know, mm. <laughs> like the rest of the world. We could have been milking them, and, and, but I'm sure it's not the best idea because uh, the food here is very, uh, very low value mm. grazing mm. grass, so mm. they need more time and a whole lot of uh, eating for a lot of hours so that they can sustain mm. themselves. Mm. Um, so, yeah, on that note... We'll see you on the next episode of Wild, Wild Africa, Africa Experience. Experience. I'm Bert. Milton is my name. All right. Take care. Cheerio.